Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. I'm Aaron. This is episode number 49. 49. I got nothing. There's nobody. There's <laughs> two people with a combined six games NHL experience, so... <laughs> no. Nobody. I thought Francis Perron was, was, was wearing... 47. 47. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah, close enough. I could have been the Yoko Ryan episode that we mentioned him, but oh well. In any case, uh, we are back. It feels like it's been a very, very long time since we've sat in front of the camera in front of you guys. But uh, we are here, we're back, and we're going to be talking a little bit today about some of the things that we've been hearing. Um, EK65 rumors being the uh, the main part of it there. Also, some things surrounding Patrick Marlowe and yeah. some of the things that might be happening with him. Yeah, we talked about Timo Meyer's upcoming contract and uh, maybe cover the Blues Bruins series a little bit. Eh. Maybe just comment on it briefly. Right. And then we'll uh, we'll announce the winners of our competition or giveaways. Giveaways, I say. yeah. Or giveaways. Uh, we also did a giveaway for the podcast listeners, so we'll announce those winners as well. Very good. You ready to start the show? I'm ready. Well, episode forty nine is coming at you. So uh, apparently another dud. Uh, according to Aaron on that one. so Definitely uh, not a top 10. Okay, opener. that's fair. And we will get to uh, the whole top 10 in episode number 50. You guys go ahead and tune in and watch that. It's going to be kind of a season wrap-up for the Fin Factor, not for the Sharks. So we're going to have some uh, some more fun stuff, some more lighthearted stuff, uh, as if we're not lighthearted enough on this show. But it'll be kind of poking fun at ourselves. So uh, <laughs> tune in for that one most definitely. Okay, really hard to do. Yeah, it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really hard for us to make fun of ourselves. Right. Yeah, uh, no. So first topic here, uh, EK65. There's been a lot of rumors swirling around, and even Kevin Kurz. I saw a tweet from Kevin Kurz today yeah. saying, you know, gosh, the uh, you know, there's basically like a click clickbait, you know, mill that's going on right now. It's just right. like so many articles about where Eric Carlson may or may not be going, and. Um, you know, things talking about he he's going to go to Montreal because his wife wants to be, be back in that area and talking about the New York Rangers because of Lundqvist, because about the Islanders because there was some actual some truth to that one. The Islanders were interested. Also that he'd be, he's coming back to San Jose or maybe he's not or he's going to Tampa Bay. It's like, <laughs> could you tell me a team that would not be interested in Eric Carlson? Yeah, exactly. Who? So, no. Right? Yeah. Nobody. So uh, these rumors are, are, it gets so ridiculous. It's a slow news day. There's nothing, you know, nothing yeah. in the finals that's controversial, so right. they need to talk about something. And a lot of these rumors start in Canada, and guess what? They always want to go to Canadian teams, right? So right. it gets them talking, and it's just a, it's a talking point, and it's ridiculous. Yeah. The Carlson rumors have been ongoing the entire season. Yes. The time is nigh, right? <laughs> like, just all this ridiculousness. So, um, anyway, I, I you heard some stuff from... Elliot Friedman. Yeah, so Elliot Friedman is not your run of the mill blogger, right? right? This is a guy who, you know, when trades are going down and free agency is going down, if you're not subscribed to his or uh, what's it called following mm-hmm. his uh, his Twitter account, uh, if you're not, and the, during that time, uh, you should be because he's generally throwing things out that he's like one of the first people throwing things out. Yeah, um, he's he's very much on the inside. He's an insider uh, of the NHL, right? Right. Yeah. So uh, he's got a lot of really good insights, and he's he has a lot well of contacts. Guy. Extremely well respected yeah. in in that whole ring. Mm-hmm. So um, from him, and he has a podcast, um, which I think we can maybe just put the link down there or whatever. Sure. Anyway, um, so I think it's called Thirty One Thoughts. Um, I happened to see something on Facebook where someone was saying, "Hey, check this out," and it was a link to that, and that's how I found it and got to it. But basically, what he was talking about was, you know, all these rumors swirling Eric Carlson, and what he had said was, you know, the last he had talked to Doug Wilson, he still feels that the San Jose camp is very confident that they're going to get this done. Mm-hmm. So um, everyone thinking that, you know, Eric Carlson's not coming back to San Jose, he may not be. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying he is, but that that decision hasn't been made yet, right? So. Mm-hmm. Your your conjecture that maybe he won't is about as valid as everyone saying throwing darts, saying he's going to Montreal, he's going to New York Islanders, he's going right. It's nothing set in stone yet. It sounds like he's still in a process, making his mind up, uh, at least from you know uh, Elliot Friedman's mouth. And he had talked with right. somebody who is a player in the NHL who is close to Carlson, and that whole thing is what he, what he had said. Of course, not naming names or anything, but. Um, that's kind of where he was getting it from, too. Mm-hmm. So I, I feel like there's a little more weight to what he has to say as opposed to what some random Yahoo writer is, you know, just kind of yeah. throwing out there looking for clicks because, again, it's a slow news day, like you said. I, I feel like he his groin injury was a groin tear, okay. possibly. I think he needs surgery to repair it. I think that's probably playing a factor in this. And I think what he's going to do is wait 
until I think it's the week before July uh, July first. Mm-hmm. You're allowed to as a as an upcoming free agent at least talk to teams. Right. So you can kind of get some contract talks and negotiations in place. You can't sign anything until July first, but he could test the market in that way where that whole week he's talking to teams and seeing what's out there. Right. And then coming back to the Sharks and being like, you know what? Let's do an eight year deal at whatever the agreement was. I'm sure, sure they have an agreement. Sure. Um, or a, a you know handshake agreement in a way or something. Like a skeleton contract. Like yeah. if all goes well and this is what we're aiming for, then this is kind of what we would be offering, right? Right. So. I'm sure he's going to want to test it and see mm-hmm. what he can get. And it's not all about money. He's, he, wants to, he doesn't want to go to a rebuilding team. Right. Um, and one of the rumors is to go back to Ottawa, which is <laughs> in complete rebuild mode. So yes. I, it just doesn't make sense. Yeah, I, I said that uh, that's not Ottawa because right. that's not going to happen. Yeah. So uh, I mean, like we had talked about. Um, or actually, I think they had talked about it too. Um, There's some other article that I was I was looking into. Again, we're fans. We're not insiders, so we get a lot of our information from articles just like you guys. But we have a show where we get to talk about it, which is nice. <laughs> so um, yeah, they had said you know it, it seems like it would be taking a step backwards in the wrong direction because they've already kind of said their goodbye. Right? Um, mm-hmm. They did. Did offer Eric Carlson a contract that he did not take, and then he ended up moving on. But to they lowballed him. I'm like, sure they did. They did that. They did that offer just to say they made an offer, and make him look like the bad guy for saying no. So, do you think, knowing that, that he's going to want to go back to Ottawa? I, I don't think not Ottawa. Ottawa. No, not Ottawa. No right? Way. Okay. And regardless, right now, uh, that's Shabbat and Tuchuk's team. Right. Right. These are the guys that are going to be the faces of this yeah, franchise. They had a culture change. They yes. got rid of. Carlson, Stone, uh, Stone yeah. Duchesne, mm-hmm. uh, who's the other one? Uh, Dezingle. Hoffman, Dezingle. Yeah. Like, everyone from a year ago is gone. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I can't imagine them re-signing Carlson no, or Carlson they, even wanting to go back to Ottawa. Yeah, and I, I, don't, I don't see that one happening either. Um, Tampa Bay, though, uh, when Friedman had talked to that player, he said that player had told him, you're not too far off, really, with the Tampa Bay, though. He, that, that's yeah. legit. Again, but who wouldn't want to go to Tampa Bay? Exactly. <laughs> who, who wouldn't want to go to Tampa Bay? And again, who wouldn't want Eric Carlson? You yep. could throw any team name out there and, yep. be, and be like, oh, well, this is how it would work. Like, I'm going to play around on Cap Friendly and show you how... Carlson signing work, we'd have to move this player and that player yeah. and trade this and and buy out this player and then it would work, <laughs> right? Like it, it, you could just talk in circles about this stuff. Yeah. So I, do you think? Let's just. What do you think of the chances are of him signing with the Sharks? I think the chances think? of him signing with the Sharks are actually pretty good. Yeah. I, I think that they. Look, I know that it basically means Pavelski can't resign, right? Because the money's just not going to be there. Um, it sounded like that Nyquist was actually still interested in resigning because he enjoyed his time at the San Jose uh, mm-hmm. in San Jose. And it seems like uh, Donskoy even is going to be a pretty cheap pickup again. So uh, he's probably another guy that's going to be entered back in with those guys in the fold. Even if Nyquist doesn't sign, I just don't think that there's that much room for you know Joe Pavelski. Yeah. And then we had talked about Logan Couture. You know, it sounds like he was maybe promised the captaincy once Pavelski's done. I don't know. If they're kind of like fast forwarding that a little bit or not but um w- to me it's what what are you trying to accomplish right are you still in win now mode because if you are both Pavelski and Carlson are going to help your team the question is how long do you want to be in win now mode I, I think the longer you want to be in win now mode you, you're looking at keeping Eric Carlson over keeping Joe Pavelski and that's not a heart decision because obviously we all love the, our captain and we want him to stay but it's a business decision. You want to have the younger player who's gonna, who's as talented in his position as anybody in the league. Right. I, to me, it, that's just like the smart move is to go with Carlson over Pavelski. I, again, for everybody screaming at me right now, my heart is with Joe. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, but you know, from a business perspective, it just makes more sense. Who's gonna sell more tickets in the long run of the oh, next six go. to eight years? That's fair. Carlson or Pavelski? Well, again, if you're going off of the heart of the people and to okay. sell the tickets versus okay. wins. Popularity, not yes. that popularity is a big thing, but how many people in Sweden are watching our show ah. because they want updates on Eric Carlson because they don't get as much news out there? No. It's a bit, he has a huge That's following. He, he made you know huge following in Ottawa. We had mm-hmm. a lot of Ottawa fans watching our show all season because of that. We had a bunch of people from Sweden watching it. So he, he is a worldwide player. Not to take anything away from Pavelski because right. he's a fantastic player and I think the best hands down hand eye coordination yes. in anybody in the league with tipping and everything. Yeah. Um, he's a great leader. He's a great player. I just don't know. Maybe the Sharks are kind of in the same situation where they want to move on right. from Pavelski and hand the reins over to Couture to the locker room. So, um, it, and that is all hinging on Carlson yeah. signing or not. So, to me, I 
we we debated about this all season about a puck moving defenseman is better than a center. You're gonna yeah. have him on the ice a lot longer. Um, I, we don't need to get all into that again, but sure. <laughs> yeah. But my my point is, what's long term better? Long term for the Sharks, it's better to have Carlson and it's Pavelski. Even if Carlson has surgery and is gonna miss maybe the first I don't know quarter of the season because he's recovering, but in the long run, he doesn't usually get hurt. He had that. Achilles injury, I think it was. Yeah. And then he had this, mm -hmm. and he's 28. So right. that's not that bad for a defenseman in the NHL. Sure. I mean, especially uh, like a smaller guy who's not always throwing his body around. Um, you don't get the wear and tear of trying to throw the hits. You do get the wear and tear of absorbing them. But as we've seen, when he is mobile, when he's mobile, and he is, um, he's able to sidestep a lot of those hits. In the last series that he played, he wasn't very mobile and he wasn't able to, and that mm -hmm. ultimately, I think, was what had made him pay the price and had to sit on the bench. But, um, you know, again, I just feel like if you're going to be looking more towards your future, you go with Eric Carlson. If you're trying to preserve, you know, your, your original core and everything for just another couple years, yeah, you stick with Joe Pavelski, but one way or another, it's going to be one or right. the other, right? So, um I don't know. It's going to be a very interesting offseason to see, uh, you know, who who comes back, uh, who's on the way out. Right. Uh, they they did say that well, Friedman had said that it sounded like Pavelski might be um, ready to test the free agency. Um, so I don't know. Take that with however you want to take it. But I think if, if we get to July first and Carlson hasn't signed, he's not going to sign because there's no reason yeah. for him to sign after July first. Well, and thank you for saying that because that was a point I was trying to remember. Was it sounded like he has to make that decision within the week, right? So if uh, if you hear something within the week, then you'll know. If you don't hear something beyond that week, it sounds like then he's probably not coming back to San Jose because uh, that player had that Friedman was talking to and said, you know, think about it this way. What if, you know, he's going, looking at San Jose and what they have to offer, and he goes beyond that week, and they say, okay, well, we have to move on. We have to figure out what we're doing, right? They move forward with some, whatever other plan they've got, or, you know, their contingency plan, and let's say something with Tampa Bay doesn't work out for one reason or another, right? Right. If anything happens and it doesn't work out for him going to Tampa Bay, cal salary cap issues, whatever, right? Uh, then what? Then you're kind of stuck with a bunch of teams that are happy to pay you tons of money for seven years, right. and it's not really where you wanted to be, and maybe they're not contenders. So I think another part of it is they would want to sign Pavelski and not let him talk to free agency in that week before. Okay. The, the week before July 1st, and they can lock him up with an extension before then. Right. Right? And keep him happy. Right. Wanting to stay here. Yeah. So you not need to, to yeah. test the market. Yeah. Carlson needs, you need to tell me if you're going to be with us or not, because if you're not going to tell us within that week, we need to get Joe Pavelski on the books. Right. We need a sure thing one way or the other. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. So uh, you had mentioned, uh, you know, scenarios where other teams, any team really could, uh, would love to have Eric Carlson. The way that they would do that, maybe having to deal with buyouts and that kind of thing. <laughs> So on the topic of buyouts, there's a little segue there. Um, yeah. Patrick Marlowe right. is in the news. He's in the news because, again, he's on a Toronto, Canadian-based team in right. Toronto, and they love to talk, especially Maple Leafs. So they need to sign Mitch Marner, and that's not going to happen with their current cap space mm -hmm. that they have. Um, Mitch Marner had, was it, 93 points this season? That's unreal. So uh, he's going to get his, he's going to get paid this year. He's going to get his money. And Toronto is not going to have enough money to 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 sign him, so they have to move somebody. It's going to be either Marlowe or Nazem Kadri is another another guy. Uh, a lot of people are talking about how Marlowe is going to get moved. Uh, I think the Kings was was a yeah. possibility, yeah. and Coyotes. Actually, the, oh, Coyotes is the other yeah. one. So I understand Marlowe want if he's going to get moved, mm -hmm. he has a no no movement clause, so he kind of controls destiny in a way. Um, Supposedly the Kings were looking interested because Todd McClellan is the coach now of the Kings. Mm -hmm. So he's very familiar with Marlowe and they get along very well. Marlowe's going to want to be as close as he can to San Jose. Kind of like, reminds me of Devin Sedaguchi. Mm -hmm. he, he tried to do a comeback in the NHL and he played with the Kings for, I think, not a full season, but for a year. Sure. Um, because he wanted to be as close as he could to San Jose. So LA is the physically closest team to San Jose, even though it's a, a six hour drive or so, five, mm -hmm. six hour drive. Not that close, um, but I, I understand Patrick Marlowe wanting to come back to San Jose. San Jose Sharks are not going to take him unless he gets traded to another team, bought out, and then signs as a free agent for a lot cheaper. Right, right. Which could happen. You never know. It could be something where 
the Fe- the Phoenix, the Arizona Coyotes <laughs> trade for him. Maybe they want him. Yeah. Maybe they want him to mentor, just like Toronto did, mentor their younger guys, and they'll have the money to pay for him. Mm-hmm. And Arizona's not too bad of a spot, distance wise, to San Jose. Um, or maybe they trade trade him, buy him out, and you know they work out a deal with Toronto where they get some really good prospect in the way. Yeah. Uh, in the other trade and go going back. So we've seen teams do this before. Um, so there's there is a small chance that the Sharks could sign Marlowe if he gets bought out. That's a very slim chance. Not to get yeah. Not to ruffle <laughs> people's feathers because people get so <laughs> upset about this. Oh, there's so much talk about yeah. Marlowe. First of all, let's talk about Marlowe going to the Kings. People okay. are upset about Marlowe going to the Kings. I am not upset about this. For me personally, <laughs> I want him to do. I want him to keep playing. He has another year on his contract, and he is able to play. Um, we looked this up. He hasn't missed a game in the NHL since the 08-09 season, and he only missed like six games. It's amazing. Then. It's ridiculous. Total Ironman streak. Yeah. So um, he can play. He plays. He brings it every night. Mm-hmm. And yeah, sure, he's not a point per game player. He's not even a half a point per game at this point. He sure. he had what 38? was it? 37, 37 points in 82 games this year. 16 goals and 21 assists. Mm-hmm. Imagine having Thornton. <laughs> And Marlowe on a third line with a third line though with with Joe Pavelski. <laughs> Can you imagine? That's, nuts. That's a good yeah. third line. That's, That's still a, a good third line. It's a phenomenal third line. Are you kidding me? That was the uh, well, yeah. I was gonna say that was a line in the Olympics, but not with Pavelski because yeah. he's on yeah. Team America. Exactly. But, um, America. <laughs> <laughs> but still, like they they can still play, and, and that would be a pretty good third line. You know, yeah. giving them third line minutes where you get twelve <laughs> minutes a night. Right. So, and we're not advocating this, by the way. No, no, no. I'm just, I'm just throwing out some scenarios here. We're indulging that it's a possibility. Right. Most likely, he's going to be playing for the Kings. So, the reason that I don't get upset about him going to the Kings is the Kings are going nowhere. They're in rebuild <laughs> mode. So, I don't mind Marlo being on the team. He's going to come into San Jose. He'll probably score a goal against San Jose, and everyone yeah. will be like so conflicted about it. But, right. Um, it's it's not a big deal to me. I'm I, I'm happy to see players move on from the Sharks right. and continue their career. Right. Um. So I I'd be happy for him, and he'd be closer to home. Yeah. No. It sounds like they would have to uh, basically buy out, or they'd have to trade uh, Marlow along with a, another high level prospect, right. right? Because otherwise, you know, Toronto can't buy him out. You you yeah exactly because if you buy him out, some the, of that money's still is, on the books, and you're still hosed well, on the whole your cap money because he's over thirty five. Oh, that's so, right. So the, they have to either trade him. They yeah. can't buy him out. Buying him out is the same as having him on the team. They, yeah. They'd rather have him on the team. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. So they have to trade him. If they, him or Kadri, right, or both. No, they're, they're going to get rid of Marlowe. They have to. Yeah. So th- what will happen is he'll get traded. They'll have to send some high-level prospect or a pick or something along with him uh, as, you know, the whole reason that you're right. trying to get him is off of your books. Well, why would somebody take him and take him off your books and then buy him out? Well, Right. Well, yeah, because they don't want him. Exactly. Well, because or, they they want the the pick of the prospect. Right. They, they, that's what they really want. And there's teams that are that are so low on the salary cap that they can do this, mm-hmm. and sometimes they need to do this because yeah. they don't. There's actually a, a floor of the salary cap where you have to spend a minimum. Arizona is usually pretty close to that. Yeah, they're not always. I think right now, because of pending free agents and UFAs and and RFAs that aren't signed as of now, the cap friendly shows yeah. Colorado is the lowest payroll. Which is insane because wow. they are, a, they're going to be a good team. Colorado's going to be good because they're yeah, going to get, yeah. or they just they got a top four, fourth overall pick. I think so, yeah. Fourth overall pick, and they went to the second round of the playoffs. Yeah. this year, well, they had one of the most dangerous lines in the NHL. I yeah. mean, really. So then you're adding a fourth overall pick to that. That's either going to mm-hmm. be a very high end defenseman or well, okay, a top six forward. Let's think about it, right? What did they have that we thought was so deadly? They have one scoring line, mm-hmm. and when they tried to break that scoring line up and make two scoring lines out of it, they thinned out too much. Well, if that fourth overall pick is a guy that can step straight in and he's you know a competent winger or a competent center. Colorado. There you go. Now you've got your two lines that can attack. They're right? going to be a very attractive uh, market, destination, uh, destination yeah. for the free agent market. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's a whole other topic we can get yeah. into in the summer. I agree. However, let's keep it shark friendly. We'll go right. back to the sharks. Uh, Timo Meyer. There's a little bit of news on Timo Meyer, or a little uh, thoughts, I guess, well, you had on Timo then. Was it? Doug Wilson said it's most likely going to be a bridge deal. He, right. he didn't say it, but he pretty much said it. So, um, He's probably going to sign a bridge deal. So what I'm thinking is the Sharks are going to try and sign him sooner than later. 
because there are so many from that draft class, the yeah. 2015 draft class, there are so many RFAs that are due to get paid. One of them, Miko Rantanen of Colorado. Mm -hmm. um, he had over 90 points this season too. So Timo Meyer's gonna they're going to want to sign him so that the market doesn't get set so high. Yeah. Because once one player goes, the next one goes, the next one goes, and they always try and get a little bit better or round yeah. where they are. So if you can be the first one to kind of set the market, that's going to be better for your team and get the ball rolling on everyone else right. signing. So I have a feeling the Sharks are going to try and sign Timo sooner than later, um, and it's probably going to be a bridge deal just so that he can get the other pieces falling for next season. Right. Yeah, I think bridge deal makes the most sense. I think you had talked about maybe three years. I was thinking closer to two. Uh, one way or another, uh, you know, I, I think it's good to get just a smaller amount of years in there because you want you need that cap to grow just a little bit more before you can pay that guy the amount of money he really mm -hmm. truly deserves. Having said that, do we know that he really deserves that quite yet? I think he will be that player that we all think he's going to be, but he's really had the one breakout season. Um, I'd like to see a little bit more out of him before we throw gobs of cash his way. Um, he's not a Mitch Marner, right, in terms right. of the amount of points that he's, he's generated. So uh, I think you're right. If Mitch Marner is the first one to sign, like Tarnero gets everything signed, uh, figured out and they sign him as soon as they possibly can, it's going to be kind of tough because Timo's going to say, well, look what this right. guy's worth, right? I mean, I may not be up there, but I'm, you know, bump me up, right? right. So that you might start causing some problems, right? So I think it, I think you've, you're, you're spot on on that one. I think... You know, two three years, um, at you know a reasonable amount. We like five, four or five. I, I'm thinking four or five. So you say five six. Yeah. See, he's, he's always one higher than I am. Higher. He's, you're one year higher than I am, and one million higher than I. See, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think anybody would want to play because you got to buy those free. I'm lowballing years. everybody. What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> it's because you used to play in NHL. That's true. Yeah. Fifteen percent <laughs> lower than what they ask for in NHL 19. By the way, that's how you sign up cheap. Go ahead. <laughs> Sad that you knew. How'd you I figure that out? I did just you look did. that up? Or yeah, I did actually. Trial and error. No, ten percent I figured, but then fifteen percent that I found out through, uh, through uh, what do you call it, the the interwebs. Interesting. So yeah, that's good to know. Good give it a give it a go. I bet it works. So anyway, uh, back to Timo. Uh, <laughs> was there any other things on Timo you wanted to bring up there? Or are you, you uh, pretty much set. Well, uh, that's that's about it. But one thing I did want to bring up is yeah. is there's a lot of an another topic here is is a lot of people are upset that the Sharks don't have a first or second round <clears> draft pick okay. going into this draft. Uh, supposedly this draft class is a very strong draft class, similar to the 2003 and probably similar to 2015, what turned out to and be a pretty strong for, draft class. For those who are unfamiliar, the 2003 draft featured a lot of big stars that got picked yeah. late in the first round. I mean, we're talking about guys like, you know, Corey Ryan Perry. Kessler. Go ahead, just name them off. Uh, I know Corey Perry, Ryan Kessler, <coughs> and there's a couple, I mean, there's a bunch. Okay. There's yeah. a bunch in that. In Take that a look. Class. You look at the 2003 draft class, it's a bunch of guys that are all-stars. Right. So. And normally, <coughs> nor in a normal draft year, in a non-strong draft year, first round picks, the first, I'd say the top five are almost a guarantee to be NHL players. Almost stars. Top three are probably going to be star players. Next, next five are going to be serviceable people. Then it just kind of gets sprinkled in there of who's going to be a, a serviceable defenseman right. or or not really like a top three winger or center but more like uh, a guy who's going to play in the NHL and, and and do okay right right not yeah. a superstar player all-star maybe here and there sure um, in strong draft classes like the 03 and the 15 you see a bunch of all-stars in that first round where you're like holy cow that's like half the guys drafted ended up being on the all-star team at some point in their career. That's yeah. pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, that's supposedly what this draft class is going to be like. Supposedly, we don't know. Sure. But um, if you, uh, <laughs> I'm going to put this spreadsheet up on the screen here, and I'm just going to go through this really quickly. This is the first-round draft picks from um, 2011 through 2018. So the last uh, was a eight nine years. Mm -hmm. um, 2011. Uh, the Sharks traded their first round pick, which is the 28th overall, to Minnesota, and they drafted Zach Phillips, and that trade was to get Brent Burns. <laughs> uh, I would take that trade. Brent Burns. For uh, I, there wasn't everything in the trade. Brent Burns for who? For the Exactly. 28th. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, he played in the NHL, so he's, sure. he's like a third line guy. Like, exactly. He's, he's played, right? <laughs> uh, 2012, they were 17th overall, they got Hurdle. 2013, 18th overall, they got Mirko Mueller. I can say that right. Mirko Mueller. Mirko Mueller. They ended up trading him away. He just kind of, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say he was a bust. He just wasn't what they expected. Yeah. And they traded him for a second round draft pick from New Jersey and ended up being a guy that, yeah. For a defenseman. Defenseman. Uh, Ferraro, yeah. He's still in Barracuda. Yeah, he's he's uh, one of those but, guys that looks like he might be panning out, but it's, you know, taking time. In the NHL? No, 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 no. Yeah. Not the NHL. Exactly. Yeah. 
Uh, Not yet, at least. 2013 or 2014, uh, they got Nikolai Goldobin, and that was the 27th overall. And they traded him to Vancouver for Yannick Hansen, which didn't work out. But it was a good trade, if you think about it, because what Wilson was trying to do there was bolster up the team for the playoffs. Right. And getting Hansen was exactly what they they needed. They thought they needed at the time, and it, yeah, it just he was didn't a work big out, body so. who was very fast. Yeah. It was it's the way the direction of the NHL was kind yes. of going. Um, 2015, where are we? Timo Meyer, ninth overall. That was 14 was the year they missed playoffs, Winner. right? Yeah. So uh, they had a higher draft pick that year. Um, 2016, they traded away for Martin Jones. That got traded to Boston, and Boston picked in 29th overall Trent Frederick. And who? <laughs> right? <laughs> who? So 2017, uh, Josh Norris, that traded... They traded two for uh, Eric, Eric Carlson. Carlson, one of the pieces for Eric Carlson. Right. And uh, then last year they got Ryan Merkley. So my point here is trading away your draft picks. They traded away a draft pick that would have been Zach Phillips, that would have been Trent Frederick, that would have been um, Josh, that, Norris, that Josh Norris. That was Josh Norris. That was Mirko Mueller, a bunch of guys and that... turn that into Brent Burns, Martin right. Jones, and Eric Carlson. I mean, that that's... Yeah. Crazy. So people put a lot of stock into these first round draft picks, but a lot of them, especially the Sharks, they ended up in 29th overall this yeah. season. Uh, they were the third best team, and so it's going to be a 29th overall draft pick. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah. Ten, no, I'm, I'm with you. 10, 15 years, 15 years ago, that was a second round pick. Yeah. That now, overall number. And so. if you if you go back to the the episode that we had with Doug Wilson, and we talked mm -hmm. to him. And we talked about some of the things with, you know, the draft picks and whatnot. And we look at what he's been able to do with those draft picks. And again, Brent Burns being one of them. Eric Carlson. Evander Kane, right? I mean, there's there, we're getting really solid NHL players, mm -hmm. really solid assets, you know, for first-round picks. Yes, but they're late. They are super late first-round picks because the Sharks have done so well. And that's part of the Sharks' problem is that they keep doing so well, right? So... Uh, I don't know. I, I'm I'm on board with Doug Wilson's plan, the way he's been doing it. I like that he's taking an asset and trading it for another asset that is of equal or greater value, really. So um, I'm I'm happy with the way it goes. I know everybody wants is ab upset that we give away our first round draft picks and everything. I, I get that, but when you look at what we're getting in return instead, um, it keeps us in win now mode. And I like being a team that is constantly in the playoffs, constantly in the hunt, uh, constantly competitive. You know, we're never really going through a rebuild. We go through retooling every now and then. We've only missed the playoffs once in the past, how many, 14, 15, 15 something yeah. years? I mean, that's that's a pretty good track record for any, any general manager in the league, right? right? So I think any owner would be more than happy to be able to look at their general manager and see the track record that Doug Wilson has and say, wow, you've kept us in the playoffs and you've kept us profitable, right? Mm -hmm. That's one of the big things, too, uh, for the past 15 years. We've never had to, like, sag out and do a full-blown rebuild. Um, if the attendance is low, it's because we're coming off a little bit of a disappointing season after we made it to the playoffs, right? Well, I also think their tickets are a little too expensive. They're a little expensive, but, but it's San Jose, right? Yeah. So what are you going to do? They're after that startup money. They want that money, money buddy. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, again, for me, I just think that, you know, it, it's been a great, great run so far. Um, and I'm sure he's got many more years left in him. Uh, Doug Wilson does. Right. And uh, I don't know. I, I like what he's done. I like what he's doing. And I don't put that much weight into the pick so much as the what the return is for that asset. If your return for your first round pick is a player that you're picking, fine. If it's a player that's already established in the league, fine. But as long as the value is there. And I think Doug Wilson's always gone after and gone with uh, gotten good value for the yeah. picks. So. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's move on and talk about uh, the current... Stanley Cup Finals, the Blues and Bruins. Is that who it is? I don't, uh, I don't know. I'm not really paying attention, if I'm being <laughs> honest with you. So, uh, yeah, I know. Um, so, a couple things I wanted to bring up about this. Yeah. Uh, first of all, let's just, as of this recording, the series is tied two to two. Now, this is, you know, kind of what we were talking about. What we were saying was that the Blues and the Bruins are very, um, I guess, uh, similar teams. In in they're they're very heavy teams, right? Mm -hmm. um, their their skill levels are very similar. I think that they're a very good matchup. And if you remember from like way earlier, you were talking about the teams that were not scary necessarily, but the teams that you felt were most troubling. Yeah. And you had said the, out of the East, the Bruins, and out of the West, the Blues. Mm -hmm. And 
here, here they are in the Stanley Cup Finals, right? So um, a- another good insight. <laughs> Amazing, right? I should be a gambler. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> so um, basically, I just wanted to bring that up and just say, you know, again, the series is tied two to two, so it does speak to the uh, the level of parity between those two teams. Um, if the Sharks did get past the Blues, I don't know that the Sharks would have made it past the Bruins, given all of the injuries and everything. So oh, they've um, been so banged up had I, they got yeah. there. And then the Ugh. the Bruins are throwing their body around yeah. as well, so they would have got just more banged then up. So Marshan would have licked somebody, <laughs> and pissed everyone off. So you know, I think I think this is a great series. I think that the you know it, it's a great matchup between the two teams. I think there's a lot of animosity actually between the two. From the little bits that I have seen, it looks like they're at each other's throats all the time, um, just really upset with each other <laughs> consistently. So if you like a lot of crash and bang hockey, a lot of you know, little cheap shot type stuff mm-hmm. after the the whistle kind of things. Uh, this is a great, great series to watch. So um, there's that. The other thing I wanted to bring up was uh, Craig Berube, I think yeah. is the coach's name. Um, he was at the podium after game three complaining about... The refs? The refs! <laughs> Isn't that amazing? No, like it's... This is not a slam to the St. Louis, uh, St. Louis Blues and their fan base or their coaches or anything else. That's not a slam to you guys at all. What this is is... Everybody complains about the refs, especially in losses. I think I think it's a strategy type thing. Yeah, because you complain about them in the media. The it kind of calls game, them out. Yeah, the next yeah. game the refs will be like, okay, maybe you're right. Maybe you should get an extra power player to here. <laughs> right? Like, yeah. I don't know. I I think I mean we saw it from Vegas, right? Gallant is the master of it. I feel like so. Um, most coaches, most coaches do it. Not every coach, but a yeah. lot of coaches do it. Yeah, I, I think uh, I think we saw some stuff on social media where where people were kind of making fun of the Blues coach, like, oh look, you know, somebody's yeah. complaining about the refs. It's like like people were getting on us about you know the refs and and everything that was going our way and everything else. So yeah, it was just kind of interesting go, right? to see. I thought the NHL was fixing it for the Sharks it, to yeah. win, right? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, again, it kind of reinforces that, you know, the, the refs aren't out to get your team. They're not out to help your team. The They're NHL out. is not a puppet master with yes. the referees to, to manipulate games. That's There's no conspiracy. There's no... Just yeah. get that out of your that, That's kind of my just point. Just sometimes the yeah. refs are bad. Yeah. That's it. it. it sometimes that's, it happens. Sometimes refs, it bites you. The refs don't wear pajamas or underwear <laughs> of the team that they love and try and fix it for them. That's right. no, no, that, none of that happens. Nobody buys the refs. The coach isn't paying them. Like, yeah. come on. Yeah. Girl up. That's just, <laughs> that's just silly. Uh, and the, the only other thing I wanted to bring up about the Blues was uh, on our last video, we actually had some comments from Blues fans huh. that were uh, pretty upset. We um, had, you know what? I'm just going to say, I thought the Vegas fans were... <laughs> yes! I don't want to say the worst. They were just the most vocal. Okay. I'll say that. Okay. Vegas fans were the most vocal that we've had, um, ripping us, I guess, in our show. Then Colorado came around, and they were cordial or yeah, fine good. and then st louis came around <laughs> coming out of the woodwork unbelievable it's like we insulted their mother or something they just went off on us in a lot of the comments and a lot thankfully a lot of youtube picks up a lot of these comments and just blocks it because of the foul language yeah or the, the non-english you can't even read it because it's so <laughs> bad um it's just it's amazing that and I, I'm not ragging on St. Louis fans. I'm just surprised that there's that many St. Louis fans that were ripping on us. I'll say this. There's a couple categories for comments, right? There's published. There's held for review, <laughs> which usually has to do with language and whatnot, right? Yeah. We've had an, a few extra held in review, yeah. um, which we can't publish because of the foul language. So if you want to rip us, you have to do it in a clean fashion. Right. Yeah. Um, Be a little clever about just, it. <laughs> just a little tool tip there. Yeah. Uh, but there's another category. Likely spam. Yeah. Now, we didn't have any likely spam in the Colorado and Vegas series, but St. Louis, yeah. congratulations, you're the winner. Yeah. So anyway, um, amazing. yeah, it was just really funny. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, no, uh, to, to the guys that were repping on us, um, you know, for liking the San Jose Sharks, I don't know if you saw the set, uh, but we're, we're Sharks fans. Uh, first and foremost here that doesn't mean that we just totally are only fanboying on sharks and everything you know we, we try to keep it even keel we try to you know give credit where credit's well, due we in get, fact we get both comments of 
oh, you guys are terrible. You're, yes. You're so ch- homers for the Sharks. And then we get some... You're so fair. Yeah, you're so fair. <laughs> like, you guys are, are fair for the other teams. And, and coming from those teams' fans, right, like right. it's like, hmm. In fact, one of the comments, which I think was one of the winners, too, uh, if you're sticking around for that, uh, one of the comments had said, you know, these guys are just super fair. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, but one of them was saying that, you know, they're We're they're too cordial too to PC. too PC for against the other teams. We're yeah. not look. We're, we just speak nicely. Okay, that's just the way that we grew up. We're we try humans. not to slam. Right. Yeah, you there's know. another person that's behind that. Keyboard. Right, 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 exactly. They might be keyboard warriors, but we're not going to be. Yeah, so. we're not going to do that. So yeah. hey, uh, to the Blues fans, hey man, uh, you guys are, are your, your team's doing really well um, in the uh, in the playoffs right now. Obviously, I was so say, we got comments like from two days ago. It, yeah, <laughs> it's game going into game five of the Santa Cup Finals, and they're still coming back to our video to rip us. It's like. <laughs> Man, get over it. Yeah. Hey. Just like just like the Vegas fans who think that because the Sharks knocked them out and the refs <clears throat> yes. cheated it for them, yeah, yeah. that Vegas should be in the finals and they'd be beating Boston right now. <laughs> really? That's not, a, no, that's not how that works. It's that's, looking a little far ahead, I think. Yeah. Yeah. The, whatever. Hey, but it just goes to show they're coming back and they're watching, right? So we must be doing something right. Yeah, sure. Can't complain sure. too much. Okay. All right. Anything else about that? No. You know, no, no more thoughts on the Blues? Okay, hey, whoever wins, Blues, Bruins, both teams, phenomenal teams. Originally, I did say Blues and six. Okay. And I said that they would win it at home, which would be game six. I, I what do you think? I still feel like the Bruins are going to take it. Um, the way game four was going, I honestly thought that the Bruins were going to win game four, mm-hmm. and then they the might blues. even do it in five. <laughs> yeah. So, but, uh, I mean, it's, it's tied as of right now. Three. As of right now, it's tied up. By the time you get this, one team will be up three games to two. But it's not because that team is that much better. It's because somebody has to be up three games to two when it's right. 2-2, right? Mm-hmm. So I I would fully expect this to go seven. I mean, really, these two teams, are, are they're, they're at each other's throats. They're just, playing so well. I think well. St. Louis is going to steal a game in Boston, game five. Okay. And maybe like an overtime. It'll be a close game. Yeah. Steal it. Steal it. Like, they'll, they'll win it. Okay. Then they'll come home and decimate. That's what I think. Okay. You heard it here. This guy's made many predictions. And again... So stop, Blues fans, for <laughs> being mean to me. <laughs> so That's why. It. That's how I'll say it. That's why he's doing no, it. No, I said Blues in six before. Whatever. Whatever. Before the series started. I'll have to rewind watch the tape. Anyway. Anything else you want to say on that? Or are no. we good? Okay. We have winners. Yes. We had the the whole uh, giveaway thing that we were doing. Uh, we had <laughs> you people... You can see our set is pretty bare. It's because <laughs> we took down balanced. everything that we're we, going to give away. We had to put up things that we haven't had up uh, in, a in a very long, long time. time. Yeah. So... Um, yeah, the, all the playoff mode shirts that we had. We did the bobble giveaway. We had a meetup. Mm-hmm. It was awesome. We met a whole bunch of fans. We actually only... Oh, b- we'll post that picture up right yeah, now. Yeah, sure. Can we see can... the picture of the fans that, there you that go. we had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a good picture right so there. So we met at San Pedro Market yeah. uh, last week and gave away a bunch of bobbles that were from the set. So these are the ones that we're keeping yeah. for next season. Uh, we are going to do another giveaway. We'll let you know when, and we'll give you a little bit more advanced time. Um, but we'll meet up somewhere else, not San Pedro Market. We'll do a different part of San Jose or yeah. maybe Campbell or something. We'll figure yeah. it out and we'll let you know. Um, but yeah, but let's announce the winners of the. So yeah, we had we first. had all of the shirts. Uh, that right. was what it was, right? Was there anything other than the shirts? Shirts or? and um, I think that was it. Yeah. There's the shirts. shirts. Okay. That, were, that were hanging up. Yeah, yeah. So um, we have the the graphic on screen. Yeah, now. we'll put the okay. graphic up. There we go. Drum roll. I guess they can read it. So yeah, they can the sweatshirt. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Stevenson Yee is the winner of the sweatshirt. Woo! Uh, fin Factor makes my body tingle. There you go. He's the originator. <laughs> uh, the Burnsy XL shirt is going to Ryan Z. The kid shirt goes to nobody because <laughs> nobody wanted it apparently. Uh, the women's shirt is going to go to Junior C. Carlson's shirt is going to Izzy the dude, and the Couture shirt is going to James Nielsen. So congratulations, you guys. Slight on correction on the um, on the kids' shirt. Um, the six seven, the size six seven kids' yeah. shirt is going to go to my son. Oh, since nobody wanted it. Right. And I know that he is a huge fan of the Fin Factor, and so I will be giving him that shirt. Too bad, so sad. If anyone had said <laughs> had said kids' shirt, any one of you had said kids' shirt, you, you would have won. You played the odds, right? You're gonna win. Yeah. Although they they probably wanted other things and didn't want to exclude themselves. Yeah, see. But here's the thing: one of those winners from the other shirts 
Had they put it in the kid's shirt and won that one, they would not have won the other shirt that they got. So congratulations right. to you and to the rest of the winners. And are we going to announce the other ones as well? Yeah. So we did another giveaway for just the podcast. So if you only watch us on YouTube, you wouldn't have known about it. So this is a reason you should listen on podcasts as well. Um, <laughs> double up. Right. Double it up. <laughs> so we asked the podcast listeners to give us a review. Mm -hmm. And it didn't have to be five stars. You know, we, yeah. anyone who gave us a review. It could and, have been a blues fan. Right. Yeah. Who wanted a... Shark's puck. Right. Anyway, uh, these are the pucks that we're giving away. There you go. The, uh, we have a Kane, a Burnsy, and what's the other one? Kane, Burns, Carlson. Carlson. Yeah. There you go. So, so um, we asked people to give reviews and send us a review, and we'd pick the winners. So the three winners of the podcasts okay. are Aaron Covino, uh, Jason Lennon, and Kyle McFarland. Thank you so much for your reviews on the podcast, and uh, congratulations. And the reviews help other people find us, because yes. I think if you get the more reviews you get, the kind of the, the better metrics you get for Very other people good. to find Sharks Podcast. So podcasts. if you are listening as a podcast right now, or if you're watching on YouTube and you also prefer to use podcasts, uh, please do give us a review. It does not have to be five star. We would love for it to be. Right. But uh, anything helps, essentially. I mean, be, be honest, just like we're trying to be fair and honest in, in how yeah. we talk with you guys. Uh, if there are certain things about the show that you guys love or maybe don't like so much, um, <laughs> there's not enough blues paraphernalia on the wall. Um, you know, <laughs> anything like that, just you know, uh, put it up. Let us know. Uh, we're we're happy to have uh, any reviews that you guys have on there. That'd be great. Um, anything else that we want to talk about here? Then uh, that puck. Yeah, you're, you're looking at that puck. That puck there is the Joe Thornton signed puck. And yes, I did say we were going to be giving that away, but I lied. <laughs> I'm lying again. We are going to give it away. Uh, I just don't know the semantics of what we're going to do just yet. I think what we're going to do is a meetup okay. raffle. So I think it'd be fun to do uh, something where... So we're going to have to buy raffle tickets and a no, Tumblr. No, I'll just <laughs> give people a number, write it down or something like that. And then like, digital, right? I could just... Here's a hat. Them. No. Pick a number. No, you no. Win. Literally, like in an Excel sheet or something like that. Just write the person's name down. And then we'll do like a randomizer later on. And in person. Boom. Then. We could do it in person, yes. Why don't we just do it in person? Okay. Draw a number out of a hat. We haven't obviously done this yet. That's why I'm saying I don't know. We haven't had the semantics. So we'll get back to you guys on that one. We'll have one more episode and we will uh, we'll get that all figured out. But if you are not following us on Twitter or Facebook, you should at the Fin Factor and Instagram is at Fin Factor. We will be putting more details of what we're doing with that uh, on our socials. So please go ahead and subscribe to us. Uh, I'm sorry, not subscribe. Follow us on those platforms. Mm -hmm. And obviously, yes, subscribe to us here because why wouldn't you? Right. Um, is there is that? that it we're good to go so that is all that we have for episode 49 there will be one more episode as we said it will be not so much a uh you know stanley cup finals recap we don't care <laughs> um so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do a season one for the fin factor uh wrap up show it's gonna be kind of more about you know some of the behind the scenes stuff some of the the kind of outtakes that we've had which have been uh, a plenty <laughs> especially yeah. in the earlier part of the yeah. season there's that a lot was, of cuts. That was in rough. our first couple. <laughs> that was episodes. rough. Yeah. I remember the first time we tried to record the outro. Oh, oh my goodness, we were here for like an hour and it was like like 15 seconds. Yeah. I couldn't I couldn't get it down. I was reading it. We it still, still couldn't get it. It down. didn't sound right. Yeah. Oh well, here's what it is. You guys will see that. So uh, go ahead and again subscribe because you will get the notification when that uh, video does come out. All right, we're good to go. Good to go. Very good. Okay, so uh, I do appreciate you guys tuning in. Please do leave your comments in the comment section down below. And again, for the podcast listeners, please do leave a uh, review for us. That would be very much appreciated. So um, I guess that's it. So uh, thank you guys for tuning in, and we will see you next week. Maybe next week. We'll see. We're not sure. <laughs> but we'll see you later. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, check out our other content, especially interviews. You can interact with us directly through social media at The Fin Factor and on Instagram at Fin Factor. And don't forget to join our live streams on YouTube. Visit our website at thefinfactor.com where you'll find all of our episodes as videos or podcasts. You'll also find our exclusive merchandise to help support our show.